Horizon Zero Dawn comes out and competing game developers and gaming companies are congratulating each other and they're like, oh yes, excellent, you have a female protagonist in your rock climbing game, you're an excellent human, let me shake your hand, good job, stupendous, oh, best game of the year. And then you get Elden Ring coming out. Now, I don't know how many of you know this, but if you look at um, Twitch, which is a very good indicator on whether or not the game is good, because if a game is good, then people start streaming it. Horizon Zero Dawn lost around 70% of its streaming numbers. Like People just started playing Elden Ring. And this is where a lot of the ass hurt from the game developers start showing. For you see, this wasn't a game that the nobility liked. And the nobility is the blue check marks on Twitter, the game journalists, the prestigious people. No, this was a game that the unwashed masses liked. And it was taken away from the spotlight of the game for proper, decent people, which is uh, Horizon Forbidden West. So you get to see people who were developers point out, Elden Ring is 97% on Metacritic, and also 97% of the opposite of what you're asked to do as a game designer in a AAA company. Objectives are unclear, combat animations are hard to read, economy is cryptic, Difficulty is high with no option, and let's not just start with the user interface. So you actually have this game developer who is getting memed to death on uh, how the game would have been made for the proper aristocrats, uh, the people who are better than the unwashed masses. So first of all, we noticed that it would have a minimap. And by the way, like the minimap, while it looks like a small addition, I would like to say just how much it robs from the immersion aspect of the game because after playing Elder Ring I just realized like when, when you're playing a game without the minimap you're looking at the surrounding you, you notice like a big tree in the distance and you want to go explore but when you have the minimap you're, you're just looking at the arrow like 50% of the time when you're not fighting you're just looking at this little minimap rather than looking at your character and, and exploring the world and you know, this is such a major change, which happened so gradually, most people didn't even notice. But yes, like, while the minimap gives you a lot of comfort and it makes you feel like you can play the game more easier because it's less frustrating, you're not trying to, to find which way to go and whatever, it just rubs away so much from the immersion and the actual experience and exploring the world. And by the way, like, I remember when I used to play World of Warcraft Vanilla, uh, you would read the quest, and it would tell you you need to go west, and there's a river, and you need to go up river, and then there's a cave, and you go in the cave, and you kill the spiders. Like, just because of that, like, you would explore the world, and the world felt more alive than when it's just, like, a point on the minimap, like, yeah, go there. And then, of course, you know, if it was a Western game, you get uh, press X to activate Tarnish Sense. Like, this is the biggest cancer that I can see. Um, press to open your journal, uh, talk to Kale to claim your reward, uh, level up. Maybe I should investigate that game. The character is talking to himself. And obviously, okay, it's not a game that the, the video game journalists love if it doesn't have microtransactions. New items are available at the Elden Shop. Purchase the epic Kingslayer set from Game of Thrones and become the true Golden Lord for only $9.99. I mean, this, this right here, this meme, is exactly the cancer of what Western games are like. And the problem is, like, we need the cancer for some reason. Like, we, we can't survive without the cancer. Like, the moment the minimap is gone, people freak out. The moment the game doesn't hold your hand, people freak out. But, it, but it's exactly like that game developer was saying. Even though it's 97% it's of the things that game dev class tells you not to do, it works. Why? Because the focus is on the game being fun. You know, like uh, a lot of the fun that comes from Dark Souls games is that you first meet the boss and it looks absolute bullshit. Like you go to the boss, he whacks you twice with his big stick and you're dead. And it looks like such bullshit. It's like, come on. But then if you don't give up and you choose to keep playing, you notice, okay, so the boss has some openings. Uh, this is how his attacks work like and... You start managing to dodge, you become like Goku in Ultra Instinct mode, and none of the boss's attacks hit you. 
And then the boss hits you once and you're almost dead and... But the boss is almost dead as well, so now your heart is pumping, like who's going to get that last hit in? And, and you start playing a little bit poorly because now you're really excited and, and you're not focusing properly, but you manage to get that last hit and the boss dies. And it feels so freaking great, you know, like after hours of standing on that boss, you finally manage to do it and it feels so rewarding. And that's why people like uh, Dark Souls games. Uh, but you know what, I think the UI still is a good job. Like, let, let's, let's help it up. There you go, you know, this, this is a proper user experience. This is a proper way to play a Western game. And then you have this game developer, and honestly, I think people are a little bit too harsh on him. Like, like here's the thing, you probably do get annoyed if you have a job and everyone tells you how to do it. Like, you have to do the job this way. And then someone does the job the exact opposite way of how you're supposed to do it, and they're the ones that are now being famous. And I think like a lot of game developers are seething because of this, and I can definitely understand why. I mean, their creativity is being robbed. The corporation tells them, no, this is the correct way to do it, and this is how you have to do it. So you don't really have much wiggle room when it comes to creativity if you're a game developer. And then you see another company that has creativity, and you're very upset. You're absolutely upset. Like imagine, um, and, and I've seen this happen a lot of times. Uh, there's teenagers who don't know how to talk to girls, right? They, they have no idea, but they really want to have a girlfriend. So they, they listen to progressives tell them how to interact with women. And even though like they do everything that they are being told, women like them less. And then they look at a quote-unquote bad boy, you know, the motorcycle Trump-supporting dude, and, and he's like surrounded by women, and they're seething. They're like, why? Why? Like, I'm, I'm doing everything I've been told. This guy does the opposite. Why is it? It's kind of like this for the game developers, right? They're, they're getting cocked by another company and they don't understand why. It's like they're doing everything wrong. So I, I kind of feel what this game dev is, is saying. The fact that Elder Ring scored a 97 Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming fuck about game user interface. My life is a lie. And I gotta say, I don't think he hits the mark. It's got nothing to do with the user interface. Like There can be games with user interface that are fun. And there can be games without user interface that aren't fun. I think the problem here is that Dark Souls listened to the community. They didn't listen to the video game journalists. They didn't listen to the gaming aristocracy. No, they, they actually noticed that they've made a game which is fun. And that was Demon Souls. And they kept working on it. They kept improving it. They kept trying. And, and by the way, the fact that uh, Dark Souls doesn't have an explicit storyline like most games do made it so that progressives have a difficult time influencing this game, right? Because, like, if it has a story, they immediately start, it's like, oh, let's make it progressive. Let's uh, uh, make it more up to modern year or whatever. Uh, and, and because the story isn't explicit, then mo the progressives can't latch on to it. So so that's a positive, I guess. Um, but uh, it, it's the fact that they really care about the community and what the community wants that makes the game successful. And we've seen this with movies like Sonic. Sonic initially came out with a very bad design for the Hedgehog, but then people complained and they listened. And it's kind of funny because Jim Carrey, who was there, like he initially uh, shamed the movie company for listening to the fans. And then he was like, oh, wow, they were right. And the movie sold very well, actually. But yeah, so, you know, tangent aside... That's what really matters. It's it's not really about the user interface. It's not about no. It's like oh look look at this. They they haven't even play tested that. They haven't even play that. I'm willing to bet they did play test it, because if you look at Elden Ring, there's a lot of visual tells that tell you where to go. Like for example, as I mentioned before, you see this big tree in the distance, and you're like oh well let's let's see if I can go there. Maybe there's something. And it's elements like that which are really cool, um, and it makes the world feel alive, it makes you want to explore, it makes you want to try, it's like, look, a ruined church in the distance, let's go there, so you're now paying attention, it's like, alright, well, that ruined church uh, gave me a really good item, let, let me see if there's other ruined churches, and so so it is playtested, I'm willing to put money on this, that Elden Ring is playtested, uh, but uh, after this uh, whole spat from more game developers on uh, Twitter, uh, the game already starts getting like a lot of negative reviews, and I made another video talking about it. It's getting a lot of ones and zeros, and I think this is why. I think they are seething. They are absolutely livid about it. 
but I don't mind review bombing. I'm pretty sure, um, given enough time, like the re the positive reviews are going to go back up, and all of the people that gave one and zeros uh, aren't going to make that much of a difference because there's not that many of them. Uh, so anyway, right? Uh, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.